Hi everyone, this is Dustin Atkinson with PM Square. Uh, welcome to our webinar. We're going to give it a couple more minutes as we still see people joining. Uh, and once everyone is, uh, looks, looks like maybe another two minutes, we'll get things started. Thanks. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, as I mentioned, this is Dustin Adkison with PM Square. Uh, today joining me for our presentation are Ryan Dolly, who is one of our senior solution architects, and Greta Brower, who is our uh, managing consultant. Uh, for those of you that aren't aware, IBM hosted a, uh, a conference uh, last month in New Orleans called Analytics University. And the goal of this webinar is to take some of the things that we learned there and bring them back to more people that were not, were not able to attend. So this is an Analytics University recap or Analytics University comes to you webinar. Uh, quickly, I uh, want to give an a overview of who we are in case you're not familiar with PM Square. PM Square is a, a IBM Gold Level partner. Uh, we, have, we have locations uh, throughout the world. With our location here in North America, based in the Chicago area, uh, we were established in early 2014, and we specialize within analytics and cloud solutions, uh, particularly Cognos Analytics, Watson Analytics, uh, the full FOPM stack with an IBM of TM1, Planning Analytics, um, the predictive solutions, and then IBM on cloud. Uh, we're, we're highly awarded within the IBM community as well as within our distributor community, Ingram Micro. And then uh, we've got deployments across multiple countries with hundreds of customers worldwide. Sorry, I'm having trouble advancing the slide. <coughs> uh, oh, a little too far. All right, uh, just a quick uh, little bit more about us. Uh, we, we really focus on our consultants. We We try to hire the best people because we think that the people make the difference in implementations. We've got everyone from Cognos Paul. If you've not heard of uh, Cognos Paul, we highly recommend you you visit his blog. We've we've got the winner of the Driving Insight with Insight contest, who's actually one of our our panelists today, Greta Brower. Um, we've got 25 consultants spread across North America, uh, three software engineers, and then multiple sales and pre-sales resources. Um, and and we've got. Uh, focus is a company that we really think helps drive success, and that's a focus on user adoption. Uh, we think that user adoption is the key to success for any implementation, regardless of what the tool is. And we and we really try to take that approach as we're building out uh, what a successful engagement, a successful project might look like. So uh, that, that's a quick overview of us as a company. <coughs> Excuse me. Jumping into our, our content for today's webinar. Um, we're going to we're going to walk through an overview of the conference as well as some highlights of some of the things that PM Square presented at the conference. Uh, we're going to look at the future direction of Cognos Analytics as as it was presented at the conference, and then we'll have time at the end for questions. Uh, 
quick logistical uh, comment that if you look inside of the GoToWebinar panel to your right, there is an area for questions where if you have questions throughout, uh, throughout this presentation, please type those uh, into that, that pane and at the end we'll address as many as we can, time permitting. So continuing on. Uh, yep. All right. Sorry, having a little bit of difficulty advancing the slides here. So a quick overview of the conference. Uh, there were 75 sessions and workshops and labs uh, presented over the course of uh, three full days, uh, the 17th through 19th of October. Uh, PM Square, we were the diamond sponsor there, so we had the opportunity uh, to sponsor the, <clears throat> the overall conference, the reception, uh, the breakfast, lunches, and dinners, and then uh, engage engage a lot with our, our clients and then meet new clients. So if, if you were there and we got a chance to meet you, thank you for coming, and uh, we definitely enjoyed that. Uh, the, the key focus areas were analytics for all, focusing on the analytics area, um, architecture and technology, insights to action, and managing performance. And as we go through some of the things that we learned there, hopefully you'll see each of those addressed. So, uh, Taking that from what our involvement was there into what we were able to present on, I'm going to hand things over to Ryan Dolly, who is on the line, and Ryan will walk us through a couple of the presentations that we gave, and then at the end, Greta will walk us through the, some of the roadmap information that we, we learned about Cognos Analytics. So, Ryan? Uh, great. Thanks, Dustin. So, uh, PM Square highlights. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. For this section, we're going to kind of focus on uh, the presentations that PM Square gave at Analytics University. As Dustin mentioned, you know, as a, a diamond sponsor, um, we had a, an opportunity to present a number of things uh, that we think were interesting, and so we wanted to have an opportunity to kind of share it with the, the broader IBM analytics community who maybe wasn't able to uh, attend Analytics University. Um, so uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is Thrive. Um, Thrive is uh, a uh, product uh, that we have um, implemented here at PM Square uh, that will kind of uh, is related to getting the most out of your uh, Cognos environment as far as a, a user of adoption and performance uh, perspective. Um, we, you know, we presented it at Analytics University. We got a great response. It has been deployed uh, for, with a number of clients. Um, you know, what is it overall? Uh, Thrive is basically uh, an adoption dashboard that's going to come uh, give you a number of, of pieces of information. So your top reports, packages, and users, um, that's included in the dashboard. Uh, user metrics, things like uh, percent change over time uh, for various measures uh, within Cognos. Uh, maybe that's, you know, percent change in report runs or something like that. Um, and it also has really detailed user report uh, and package information. Um, and all of this is coming out of the audit database, right? Um, so it's really kind of, you know, unlocking the data that's in your audit database, which you may have some insight into today, uh, but kind of taking that information to the next level so you can use it to start to drive adoption within the organization. Um, aside from the adoption dashboard, there's also a number of uh, enhanced Standard reports, we'll call them. Uh, you know, these are the things that maybe have a couple prompts that you can schedule to run, um, maybe deliver a PDF, that sort of thing. Um, there's kind of two versions of Thrive uh, that we're going to talk about. Thrive 10, or what we're calling Thrive 10, is, is the current implementation. We'll get into that a little bit. Um, and then Thrive 11 uh, is something that we're working on in the labs uh, that's going to be headed towards a, a beta uh, coming up at the end of the year, which we'll, we'll discuss more. Uh, as well. So, um, well, why did we build this, right? Cognos has audit reports. Um, why not just use the audit reports? So, you know, the Cognos audit reports do answer a lot of really basic questions, and they are useful, um, but, right, they, it, it's a very narrow slice of, of usage information. So I, I'm sure a number of you um, on, the, on the call right now have experience with the audit reports, and um, any individual report, you know, if we look at the, the, the graphic you can see on the screen here, you know, um, execute reports by user, um, execution history by user. These are, these are very narrow looks at what's going on within your Cognos environment. 
Um, they're very far from comprehensive. There are a lot of questions you may have that you're going to have a hard time answering with the out-of-the-box audit report. Um, if you do want to customize them to, to give you more information, it's very time-consuming to do that. Um, and there's no higher level statistics. So um, you have a lot of point in time or some very basic trending, um, but for the most part, it, it's kind of you know point in time looks at an individual user or individual report as far as uh, number of executions or performance information. So it's really, it's good for the, that kind of out of the box point in time monitoring, but it's really suboptimal for um, usage or adoption monitoring or anything where you're gonna be tracking what's going on in your Cognos environment uh, over time. So that's where Thrive uh, 10 comes in. Um, Thrive 10 is a dashboard that we built in Cognos 10 using Report Studio. Um, it's got, uh, you know, it's, it's not a total out of the box uh, Cognos report. There are some HTML and JavaScript customizations built into it. Um, it has detailed information uh, for reports, packages, and users with uh, basic adoption information like report runs and, and things like that. Um, it also has a, a pretty nice user search uh, that we find uh, people are getting a lot of use out of. Uh, this is currently something, you know, that we've deployed at nine clients and are, are actively collecting feedback on and, and have um, made some changes to it based on that feedback. Uh, so it's not just kind of a speculative thing. We actually have this out in the field and being used by uh, Cognos clients today. And just to give you an overview of that interface, I'm not gonna demo it, um, the Thrive 10, because we're, we're kind of transitioning to Thrive 11. But just to show you a little bit of what that interface looks like, I did wanna include this, uh, this image here so you can you know, you can kind of see um, it's got some overall information uh, at the top as far as run count and, and login count uh, for both the last 12 months and then in the last 30 days. And then uh, going down the, the side of the screen, you see, you know, package information um, and run count. So in, in this example, I've got top 10 and, I'm, and I can see um, this is our demo environment, right? So, of course, uh, go sales query is going to be the most uh, used package with 380 runs. Um, but you can see going across, uh, you know, top 10 in the last 30 days and then top 10 failures, which um, is a useful piece of information that we found a lot of clients have a hard time um, keeping track of or monitoring. So, uh, you know, you can see um, in the under top 10 failures last 30 days, you know, the packages that the fail count by package um, to help you kind of monitor the performance of your environment through time. Um, so like, like I said, that's Thrive 10. It is a deployed in production with, with nine clients today. Um, but we are in the process of transitioning uh, to what we call Thrive 11. So Thrive 11 uh, is a custom application developed on, on mean stack. So it's a top to bottom web application. It's not a, uh, a Cognos dashboard. Um, it's built using uh, D3 uh, JS and tabulator uh, as well um, to, to help render the results. It's interactive, filterable, what we call a data dense presentation. So compared to what you saw in, in Thrive 10, we're going more towards kind of a Stephen Few, uh, you know, data visualization best practices approach for uh, Thrive 11. Um, and it includes uh, the ability to define custom groups, which is something that we've found people uh, get very excited about when they see. So um, the idea here would be, you know, maybe you've got a group of users um, you're, you're rolling out Cognos to a new area, and there is no kind of natural uh, grouping of those users within your Cognos environment, right? Um, but you want to keep track of those users as a whole in order to ensure that as people come on board uh, with Cognos, that they are, um, you know, that they are adopting the solution, that they're using the reports you developed for them, or um, that they're, uh, you know, what they're doing in the environment as far as what reports are they running? Are they using the dashboard feature in Cognos Analytics, for example? Um, but the ability to, you know, define a custom group that doesn't already exist in Cognos and isn't in your Active Directory, but is a slice uh, of uh, your user community that you want to track kind of together. Um, that's something that's, that's available in Thrive 11 today. And then, um, you know, search by type uh, for any object or user in Cognos. So the ability to go in um, and have kind of a, uh, a search uh, box where, you know, if you were to type in finance, 
it would come up with uh, everything in your environment that's related to finance, whether that's users who are in a custom group called finance or users who are part of the finance active directory role or the finance reports, um, display all of that for you, uh, you know, in, in kind of one place. So I will give a quick demo of that. Um, and if, if you're interested in what you see here, um, you know, we, we can get more, in, uh, obviously we'll take questions and then um, we will, uh, you know, I'm also available, I'm the product manager for Thrive, so I'm available anytime to, to sit down and kind of talk through on what Thrive is and how to use it. But just to give a quick demo of it, here, this is our uh, Cognos Analytics, our internal environment at PM Square um, that we use. Uh, and here you can see on the left-hand side, we've done some light customizations here, um, but we've added this Thrive uh, local host icon. So when I click on that, um, it's going to bring up uh, the Thrive 11 dashboard. So you can see here um, some information. Um, I can select uh, from a number of different date ranges. Right now I'm looking at uh, the last 60 days of audit information in our environment. I've got the total number of logins, uh, report runs, and the total number of failed report executions um, with uh, a little spark chart here showing me the trend uh, as far as those uh, items. Um, here I've got uh, kind of uh, uh, what this is showing me, um, probably better view. Again, this is right, the beta for this is starting next month. So this is kind of an alpha state or pre-alpha state, what you're looking at right now. Um, if I were to just jump into uh, the 14 days here, you can see this a little better. Um, so this is giving you the ratio of batch versus interactive runs uh, within the environment. So are people predominantly receiving reports that were you know, run by the batch service, or are they logging in and, and building their own reports? And we can see that here, um, along with uh, percent change uh, for users in the environment. So over the last 14 days, uh, we can see um, that there's been a, a drop off uh, in users, and it this will just give you the you know the top um, five users right now who have had the most change, positive or negative, um, by percentage within uh, the the time frame. And then here I have um, this is a kind of a tabulator um, list. Let's go back to the 60 days of information so you can so we can see it a little better. Um, but here I've got my users, right, the number of reports the trend of those reports over time, the percentage of their executions that failed, um, what the top report was that they ran, uh, the percentage of uh, interactive. So here, this is useful for tracking. Hey, we just rolled out the dashboard feature to a bunch of people. Um, we want to see you know, what impact does it have on um, whether or not they're using Cognos in an interactive way, right? Um, so that, that would be the percentage of their executions that are interactive and then their last login. And then here you can see um, kind of some interesting things that people have always wanted in Cognos, but you don't have, for example, um, you know, on the fly uh, reordering of columns, right? Um, or uh, filter box. So if I were to type in, um, they start typing Dolly, right? When I type EO, you know, it, I don't have to type in the thing like a traditional prompt and then hit the query button and then it's gonna open a new tab or something like that or load a new screen. Um, it, it filters on the fly as I type. So if I type Dio, you'll see it filtered to the, the two dollies who um, work for PM Square. Uh, and um, yeah, so I mean, that, that's kind of, okay, so this is an alpha state, uh, a total custom application that, that we can deploy within your Cognos environment. Um, and you know, if you're interested in it, uh, we would obviously, uh, you know, we can uh, have a conversation about how do we, you know, what does this actually look like in production uh, and that sort of thing. Um, so that was the uh, quick Thrive demo. Like I said, uh, the Thrive 11 data that I showed, and I know I went through that pretty quick, so you, you may have uh, a lot of questions about how exactly it works. Um, but the Thrive 11 beta is scheduled to start in early December. It's going to run through um, Q1 of 2018. And if that is something you're interested in, um, feel, go, feel free to email me uh, at at rdolly at pmsquare.com uh, to register your interest. Um, like, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm the product manager for this, so um, I will be uh, managing the, the beta program. And we're looking for people to test, um, and we're looking for people for, from a variety of, um, uh, with a variety of different Cognos environments. 
So, you know, whether you have a, a huge environment with 12,000 reports and 1,500 users, or you know, if you have a much smaller environment with a couple dozen reports and, and 10 users, um, and we're interested in, in getting uh, clients across the spectrum into the beta program. So um, if you're interested in that, like I said, reach out to me uh, and we will, um, you know, we can uh, have a conversation and, and see, um, you know, if uh, we can get you into the program. Uh, we right, do we have, a, have a poll. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, pop up the poll here. So um, we just have a, a, a quick poll here um, to see if, uh, you know, if you're interested in, in learning more about Thrive. Um, so go ahead and uh, fill that out. Okay, yeah, I'll go ahead and close the poll. Um, yeah, so we had a, a kind of a pretty good, uh, you know, split there of, of people who were interested. Um, if, and, you know, if you are interested or you're not sure if you're interested, um, go ahead and contact us and we'll uh, kind of talk through what it is and, and what the uh, idea behind Thrive is and how it can help you uh, expand adoption within your Cognos environment. Uh, moving on to um, uh, a second presentation that we gave at Analytics University, and this is something that we've gotten our super positive uh, feedback on. Um, I think because it, it, it qualifies as being uh, really cool would be the technical uh, technical term that you would use for it, um, would be our uh, a project we did with the University of Louisville. So just as a kind of a... Um, uh, an overview, you know, the University of Louisville now has a, a sports uh, performance department, and uh, as part of that is a, a sports analytics team. So um, the, sports an the sports performance team is, you know, designed to, or the, the goal is obviously to increase the, the health of the athletes and the performance of the athletes um, on and, and off of uh, the field or the court, whether that's, um, you know, keeping them on track academically, um, ensuring that they're ready for game time from a, a health perspective and then, you know, with the end goal, of course, of um, winning games, right? Um, so the University of Louisville made an investment in uh, what are called um, uh, catapult units. Basically, this is um, a combination of uh, GPS and, and accelerometers that, are, that the athlete wears during practice or game. Um, and they were collecting a ton of information related to that, uh, things like, um, you know, um, athlete heart rate, uh, maximum speed, rates of acceleration, uh, you know, total distance traveled during the course of a game or practice. Uh, they were collecting all of this information, but then they were kind of struggling um, to uh, do anything with it. So uh, we came in, we partnered with IBM uh, to create a solution for them with the, with the goal of um, automating this data collection and management, providing them the ability to investigate what was in the data and then visualize uh, those results. And, and what that really took the form of was um, kind of three components. Uh, one, uh, we built uh, an application uh, in uh, that was um, that we called the, the Louisville Scraper. But really, what it did is, um, you know, because they have had a number of different systems and none of them spoke to one another, um, we, we built this application that was able to go in you know, launch the various uh, user interfaces of their systems, scrape the necessary data, um, and then kind of pull it all into one place so that we could feed it into SPSS Modeler. And we built a model of um, uh, specifically looking at uh, athlete injury um, and uh, so a model specifically to look at uh, the risk of, of an athlete um, being injured, right? Um, and so, uh, you know, we obviously we back tested it. It was 93% um, accurate as far as um, its ability to uh, predict uh, whether or not an athlete was going to be injured uh, during a game or practice. Um, and importantly, um, you know, it gave um, a number of um, uh, false positives, of course, um, but there was not an injury in the historical record that it failed to predict. 
right? And then we use Cognos Analytics to create reports uh, and dashboards to distribute those um, uh, insights to uh, the various coaches and, and training staff in the university. Um, so what did this, what did that look like? Uh, it, we have things like a daily wellness dashboard that we created for them um, that uh, you know, showed the from the various athletes. So each one of these um, uh, bars here is a uh, an individual athlete, and you know we're kind of taking uh, different pieces of wellness information and creating this stacked uh, bar chart um, for the training staff to look at. Uh, we created a wellness trend dashboard. Um, and then we, you know, we created a, a number of reports uh, based around uh, these items, as well as the, the risk of injury to distribute to coaches. And one of the interesting things of, of this project that we learned, we learned a lot um, about kind of the, um, you know, uh, really like applying the visualization and reporting best practices from a design standpoint, and because there's just a huge spread of the coaches at, at the University of Louisville in terms of uh, what I would call their, um, maybe their old schoolness, right? <laughs> uh, what, when it comes to, are they willing to look at something like a dashboard, uh, and incorporate that into what they do? Or, you know, do they have a mentality of, hey, this, all this analytics stuff is, you know, I'm, I'm a basketball coach. I know basketball. I don't need to look at all this stuff because I can tell when an athlete is, is, um, tired or not, right? And, and given that we, you know, we have that huge spread of some coaches really wanting to invest in analytics and believing in it, and others kind of scratching their heads and not wanting to give it the time of day, you know, how do we design a report that can communicate to both of those audiences? So overall, this was a, a very, uh, a project we were thrilled to be involved with. We're really happy with the outcome. Um, and and uh, people have been very interested in when we present it. So if you want to hear more about this, of course, um, if you're, uh, and we did present it at Analytics University, but um, we've also been asked to present uh, at the IBM Think Conference in Las Vegas in spring 2018. So um, if you're attending Think, be sure to drop drop by and, and see this session. I, I think you'll find it very interesting. Um, and you know, if you're on the fence about Think, um, you know, feel free to uh, to reach out to us uh, if you have questions about it. We can kind of help you figure out, um, you know, whether it might be something you'd be interested in, in going to or not. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hand over uh, uh, the presentation to my, my colleague, uh, Greta Brower, uh, who's going to uh, take it from here. Thanks, Ryan. Before we jump into what we heard um, from IBM about the future direction, I first want to touch on another presentation by our PM Square team from Analytics University, which was around the process of requirements gathering. Um, so we've identified and kind of proposed to attendees that there's an old approach, quote unquote, old approach to requirements gathering, where users provide the mockups or the requirements and the developers really just act as order takers to create the report to the user spec. And the old way really only works for enterprise reporting. Delivering true analytics requires a deeper understanding. And so on the flip side of that, what we're proposing is there's this quote unquote new way where it's really a more collaborative process and the key to providing true analytic solutions requires this because the users know their data and the analytics and BI team know the tool, but neither side usually has enough information on their own to come up with a good analytics tools that, that prompts insights and action by the business. So the business and IT really need to work together to help each other. Because on the business side, you know, there's self-service projects, and those are under question due to a lack of data governance. They still require a lot of IT vetted solutions. Um, and on the, the business side, um, we're really keeping our organization stuck on enterprise reporting by not taking things to the next level. So, so both sides need better options. And you might be wondering, how could I facilitate such a, a move to a new new approach on um, requirements gathering. And to do that, you can ask um, more interesting or um, deeper level questions, like what are some of the main challenges you face in your job? Or what information are you lacking to make better decisions? Another good one is, um, do customers regularly ask for information that you can't deliver or have a really hard time trying to produce? Things like that. And those are 
um, a little bit more challenging than asking just simply what report do you need, um, which is the question we've always asked in the past, but what we're finding is drilling in a little bit deeper gets much better results and better um, tools for the, the business. Okay. So now we're going to switch gears from sessions presented by the PM Square team to what we heard in sessions from the IBM product managers. And the biggest resounding underscore to what we heard from IBM was future direction in terms of things to keep um, kind of like an eye out for during upgrades, helpful hints, and then also new features in C11. So let's start there with upgrading to CA. Okay, so we've heard um, some of the information on this slide on the future direction of studios specifically within Cognizant Analytics emphasized many times. Query Studio and Analysis Studio are definitely going to be deprecated after C11 based on what we've heard at the conference. The good news is that it's easy to convert Query Studio content by opening up, opening it up in Report Studio and resaving, but not so much for analytics analysis studio so that might require a little bit more upfront planning another big one is event studio there are no plans to deprecate event studio IBM realizes this is a really powerful tool and some customers have a lot of dependencies even like whole data flow processes built within event studio so it's very clearly not going anywhere according to the the project manager who spoke very passionately about this at the conference um, and these these are considered the legacy studios. They're accessible through the other companion applications pane, and then they launch in a new window. So right now, it's not really clear if Event Studio is going to stay there long term or move elsewhere when those other tools um, are, are deprecated. We'll have to wait and see where that ends up. In terms of um, workspace and portal pages, those do open in C11. There's been a lot of confusion around this, but they do work. However, there's not any increased functionality and they are gonna be deprecated after C11. So we're not recommending, obviously, that either workspaces or portal pages are used as solutions at this point. And you should probably consider migrating content to new display options, uh, especially if you've got a lot of these types of um, organizational type of uh, display options. So feel free to connect with us if you need advice on how to best transition those. We've recently come up with a few creative solutions for other clients. Um, and then lastly, security groups. This is kind of interesting because um, there are four new security roles included in C11 that correspond with licensing to make tracking and adhering to licensing agreements easier. Um, there's even a built-in license auditor in the new version if you haven't seen that yet. But the key here is that you need to utilize the new groups in order to utilize the auditor. And when you upgrade, it's important to note that a deployment enables those new groups by default, but a content store upgrade does not. So there, there, there are other ways around that if you do want to use the auditor, but just keep that in mind if you want that default behavior. Okay, moving on, a few more notes about upgrading. Um, IBM Services provides a free capacity planning tool to ensure that you have the right architecture for your environment and expectations around performance. So talk to your IBM rep or PM score if you're interested in getting connected with that to help you plan. Um, like I said, that, that's something that IBM provides for free. Another point that's been uh, in really high demand is is that you can now route users to different dispatchers based on the various modules in C11, which is really helpful from an architecture standpoint. Um, and things like that should be considered upfront when planning your environment with other requirements like additional memory if you plan to use some of the new features and things like that. So that's something to consider as you potentially take advantage of that free capacity planning tool. If your upgrade is moving to the cloud or if you're leveraging the upgrade as an opportunity to convert from CQM to DQM, one recommendation that we heard really loud and clear from the product managers was to use Lifecycle Manager to compare uh, the CQM to DQM results and identify any errors. There are some other third-party tools out there that are also helpful for this, but Lifecycle Manager pulls all the errors, not just the first occurring error, which is really helpful and is um, at least what we've seen is a limitation in some of the other tools. 
Uh, one other item admins often forget is to run a consistency check before upgrading, so make note in your plan to include that. And then finally, um, CA is really encouraging the in-place upgrade. So you install over the existing version. So make sure that, you know, there's gonna be a big push from C10 to C11, but set the expectation up front that in the future, upgrades will be happening more frequently in Cognos Analytics. You won't wanna stay more than a couple versions behind, and the in-place upgrade makes that really achievable. Okay, moving on to new features. So if you haven't already heard, Surprise, Cognos Analytics Release 8 was um, announced a little bit ahead of schedule based on what we've seen with past releases. So it was a bit of a pleasant surprise, at least to our team. It was released this past Sunday, November 5th, and the download's available on the IBM site already. So that's really exciting. So what's new in R8? quite a few things, and that's what I'll spend the rest of these, um, the, the last few slides. So there's been added and improved data sources for the um, connections that are listed on the slide, MongoDB, Spark, Azure, um, and Amazon Redshift and Athena. There have also been some enhancements to managing scheduled activities, which is really exciting. So regular end users and administrators can manage schedule activities in a very similar way. Users now have a new option called My Schedules and Subscriptions to view and edit their activities. Um, and administra administrators also have a similar inter interface to manage activities of all the users. Um, so that's the bottom screenshot, which um, shows the new um, the scheduler window and the properties associated with each object that you can um, utilize to modify each of the schedules. So it gives you the ability for more control and visibility and also tracking of dashboard usage, which wasn't available in the past. So that supports auditing and that's new. Moving on to data modules. Modules. There are not too many changes here in terms of functionality, but Release 8 has included um, a default cardinality detection with one degree of separation. So one of the places that cardinality is indicated is on the diagram view where you first import your data module. You have the ability to override this as needed, but that's what I've called out here um, with the yellow. This is where the cardinality indicators are displayed. In general, the data module visualizations have improved a lot, which makes it easier to navigate and make connections in data modules. Okay, reporting dashboards and story updates. There are added options to increase the visibility of labels. Um, for example, some visualizations allow you to add new formatting like shadows or increase the contrast, which is really helpful for users. There's also the ability to um, resolve what we're calling ambiguous data source connections and sign on. So when you're building a dashboard or a story and there are multiple data source connections and data source sign ons you can receive a prompt or you you will receive a prompt asking you to resolve the connection. And this could either be um, due to multiple connections to the same data source or multiple sign-ons to the same data source. And this prompt on the bottom left is what that looks like um, when you're in the environment. But once you select a connection, it's set for the remainder of your session. It will only prompt one time. So if you want to switch connections, there are two options. You can either close and reopen the dashboard or you can use the relink option and select the source again. Um, and that would, that would, um, that would prompt the pop-up again. So that's really helpful. You don't have to reset the same data source connections over and over, which has been a little bit of an annoyance in the past. Um, there's also some new map options, which include support for longitude and latitude data points. And this visual on the right side of the slide um, demonstrates that. And lastly, there's the ability to highlight data in a story. So you can highlight specific pieces of data while still showing the context of where that data appears. For example, you might want to highlight a single year and dim the other years, for example, in a bar, dim all of the other bars. And this is all um, possible now in release eight.
Okay, and there's there's a there are a lot more enhancements than that, but here I've listed just some kind of other random, but what I find very exciting features that I thought you might want to know about. So um, the run and XML option is new as of R8. Prior versions did not include that, which is almost a little bit surprising, but now it is available and it's under the run options in R8. Also, the default run option setting is a huge feature that's always kind of like the XML. It's always been there in C10, and I know a lot of users are gonna be really happy that it's now included in C11. The gist of the feature is that it allows you to set the default click option. So if you click the blue um, report name, what happens? Does it run or does it view saved output? This default run option setting is what lets you choose either way what happens. There's also uh, Cognos for Microsoft Office plugin available. Um, the image picker window has been available previously for dashboards, but it's now available in reports, which is really exciting. So you can upload custom images. It's a lot easier than the process in the past um, using the image library extension. And this is this works for both on-prem and in cloud in dashboard, dashboard stories and reporting. So that's a, a huge enhancement. Um, there's also more options for hyperlink hyperlinks within reports, um, so more specificity over what happens when something's clicked, and um, in past versions there were less than, I guess you could say, predictable results, and so now the results are more predictable, which is a good thing. And then this last one's really interesting. Um, Multi-exclude as a prompt or selection type has never really existed in the past by default in, in Cognos reporting. So this one's exciting. Instead of just having the select all or deselect all in addition to making the individual selections, um, meaning you select one at a time for things that you do want to include, you can now take the reverse approach and select which items you want to exclude. And it will show the context if you hover over um, the little uh, filter icon on the top right corner of the object, like in the screenshot, the bottom left screenshot here. So that will save a lot of time and a lot of customizing on the IT side for those who have users who've wanted similar features in the past. So with that, I'll hand it back over to Dustin. I think there are some questions that have come in in the chat window. Um, but before that, we're gonna throw out a quick poll question onto the screen. So if you're looking for more information about training, uh, even around like upgrades or general C11 questions, let us know by clicking yes, no, or maybe. All right, awesome. Hopefully everyone got their vote in. All right, uh, thank you, Greta and Ryan. Those were great presentations. Uh, we do have a number of questions. If you have additional questions, please do uh, put them into the question uh, area within GoToWebinar. But I'll just start at the top, which a lot of these are regarding Thrive. Um, so Ryan, I think this is for you. How will the load times be on bigger environments for Thrive? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. So, um, you know, as, as we all probably know, um, if you've had your audit database running for a long time, it can be pretty substantial. Um, so, uh, you know, the load times uh, are good. And, and that's one of the reasons why we transitioned from, in Thrive 10, if you recall, it was a, Cognos report, you know, just running with the Cognos query service and, and all of that, we, we transitioned it to, to that custom application. So um, because we're using uh, MongoDB on the back end, we can architect it so that even if you have a really big audit database, uh, you should get um, very snappy performance uh, in the dashboard when you're uh, working with it interactively. So, so the answer is good. It'll perform well, kind of regardless of the size of your audit database or environment. Awesome. And um, I'm going to back, bounce back and forth between some of the questions on each of your presentations, just so we we can alternate uh, for people who are more interested in the the second part of the presentations. But um, this is for you, Greta. Will the Microsoft Office plugin uh, support Office 365? Mm, that is a great question. I will have to follow up with the asker on that one. I am not sure. Okay. 
Uh, and everyone, as part of our follow-up to this, we'll send out a link to the video recording, but we'll also send out all of the questions and uh, answers that we provided, whether live or uh, via research after. Um, okay, um, back to, I believe this is a Thrive one, is, uh, no, maybe this is general. So is CQM supported in cloud yet? Great, I'm no, unfortunately, no, not yet. And I guess okay. I should say, there's not a plan to support it either. So maybe not yet is not the right response. Maybe it's just, no, it's not, it's not supported, unfortunately. Okay. All right, um, here's another one on Thrive. How often will Thrive be updated? Um, I, I guess uh, as far as, well, I guess I'll interpret that to mean how, how often will uh, there be a new version of Thrive available? Um, so we're, we're transitioning sure. to, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, I, well, I guess I'll answer it both ways. So um, as far as the data that's in Thrive, um, you know, it's, um, it, it's not going to be a, a live connection to your audit database, um, but it will be a, a scheduled pull of data. So we haven't, you know, one of the things we need to sort out, and, and uh, this will come through our, you know, the beta program um, and, and feedback that customers provide there, but one of the things we need to sort out is, like, how often should it be refreshed, the data, right? Um, daily, weekly, hourly, uh, those are all, all options. So right now what we're thinking is perhaps we'll give you the ability um, to, to set your own schedule for off and you want the data to be loaded into Thrive. Um, but that's, that's all still kind of will be sorted out in the beta based on customer feedback. Um, as far as how often a new version of Thrive is going to come out, uh, we are going to be using a pretty modern software development methodology with it. So um, just as Cognos has transitioned to roughly quarterly releases, um, Thrive will, will probably have uh, roughly quarterly releases. Uh, we were not sure if we want to explicitly time them with the Cognos release. So every time a new Cognos release comes out, a new release of Thrive comes out. Um, we're not certain as far as that goes. But um, yeah, roughly quarterly releases uh, for Thrive. Okay, great. Um, I think this is another one made for Greta. Are there any Cognos Analytics workshops and or showcases in the Chicagoland area? So maybe you want to talk about our winter training, Greta? Are you still on? Uh, sounds like we yeah. lost it. <laughs> I think we may have lost Greta. Oh, sorry, so, was I on um, mute? Sorry about yeah, that. <laughs> I was just talking to myself here. Um, yeah, we have an annual winter training event that's usually around the February time frame. That's in the Chicagoland area. We also have um, in the August time frame a um, more like a customer appreciation event, but it's also very training focused event called BA Con Bacon Business Analytics Conference. Um, so those are in the Chicagoland area. We also host virtual and um, Cognos virtual training and Cognos user groups from time to time. And then obviously IBM also hosts some events. So if you're interested, we could connect on that. Um, Dustin, if you could just provide me the information for who asked that question or we can send out a link afterwards. Yeah, okay, great. Um, next question, I've heard that uh, uh, Cognos Analytics 11 R7 was rather slow. Has R8 solved this issue? Hmm. I have not heard that in general, just that the environment is slow. Um, so I don't necessarily have an answer at this point, but I can do a little research and follow up. Yeah, I, I think I, I have heard of um, some of the web renderings being a bit slower, and I've, mm -hmm. I've not witnessed those same issues in the version of R8 that I saw uh, installed in the last few days, but I don't know. I don't know if we've done any true timings of that to confirm, but we can try to get a little bit clearer on that. Right, and I think one thing that um, a lot of people thought was a little bit slow was the way that security was originally handled in the first few releases of analytics because there was essentially a reroute happening behind the scenes to get single sign-on to work. That's been kind of revised and it's more integrated now. So any concerns about like the initial logon or anything that's passing security credentials is probably faster now, but we, like Dustin said, we have not many time tests. Okay, um, go back to a uh, question on Thrive here. Does Thrive keep track of report views as well? 
Uh, yeah, so Thrive is going to keep track of um, uh, pretty much all of the, the things that you're doing in the environment. So um, whether that's a report run or uh, you're viewing a, a saved output, it, it'll, it'll keep track of both of those. Okay, great. Um, are Report Studio and Cognos Workspace in advance gone? I'll take that one. Um, so they are, but now there's just one reporting interface. So it's the reporting module. Instead of having multiple studios um, like there were there was before in C10 with the launch drop-down window, C11 just leverages security groups to expose either more or less complex features depending on the access level of the user. So there's no report studio or workspace advance per se, but the reporting module covers all of the prior capabilities. So kind of yes and no. And behind the scenes, it's still Report Studio. And behind the scenes of that, Report Studio is, is really just, or Workspace Advance is really just a pared down Report Studio. So really at the lowest level, it hasn't changed, just the interface has. And I guess the branding or the labeling of the module. I agree with that. Um, all right, so I think this is in relation to the fact that we have our, our beta starting for the new version of Thrive, but someone is asking, is the original version of Thrive available now? Uh, yeah, so it is. Um, we, we kind of, you know, if, if someone is really dying to get their hand on Thrive 10, um, we are still distributing it. Um, we, you know, at some point we're, we're going to kind of shut that off and, and transition completely to the newer version. Um, so when exactly that's going to happen, we haven't decided yet, but if, if you're interested in um, Thrive 10 or, or the old version um, that I showed the screenshot of, certainly reach out to us and, and we can uh, talk about uh, if it makes sense to deploy it in your organization today. All right, great. Um, we've got one more right now on each of these areas. So has there been any talk about Metric Studio and is IBM moving it to TM1 or some other app? Hmm. I think that's for you, Greta. Yeah. I don't think it's getting moved anytime soon. Um, but to be honest, I haven't looked into it that deeply. If the question is about within administration panel, um, kind of like the um, stoplight colorations and the different thresholds you can add, that still exists today because the administration hasn't changed. But if there are other specific features that you're referring to, I might need to do a little bit of research and follow up. And Brian, yeah, I think I, you and I were in a roadmap discussion where this came up, so you may be able to provide additional insight. Yeah, I think um, so. That I mean, it's a good question when it comes to Metric Studio. So basically, uh, yeah, the, the functionality of Metric Studio is um, transitioning or has been transitioned to TM1. So if you have Metric Studio today, um, it, you know they're not. Uh, it, it's not being imminently dropped, but um, if you know, if you're a new Cognos customer, for example, if you were to buy Cognos today, um, Metric Studio is not even an option for purchase anymore. And that's been the case, uh, I think, since April. So I would say, um, you know, the long term, uh, yeah, Metric Studio's functionality is being transitioned to TM1. It doesn't mean you need to imminently rip it out of your environment or go out and purchase TM1, uh, but that is the direction of the product. Great. Um, I think I had another Thrive one in here. Is Thrive based on the audit database? Does it capture info not in the audit database? Yeah, so right now uh, it's pulling uh, from the audit database, and that's where it's getting all of its data. Um, we the, the development direction for it, there's uh, kind of three instances where uh, we will start pulling data that's not in the audit, audit database that are, that are on the roadmap. So the first is going to be uh, performance information, pulling that directly from Windows, so that you'll be able to um, correlate, uh, you know, uh, because we have we have the runtime of your reports, right? So um, we can tell you with the audit database information, hey, these reports took a long time to run on Tuesday, right? But being able to correlate that with the performance metrics uh, from your servers, so you can say, well, why was that? You know, was the CPU hitting 100%? Were we running out of RAM? what was going on. Um, so we are going to incorporate that data in Thrive. Uh, we have talked about, there's some data in, in the log files of Cognos. 
um, that we might want to grab uh, that is not in the audit database. So that's a possibility um, for non-audit database information making its way into Thrive. And then the long-term direction for Thrive is going to expand to, uh, to other products. So right now it's just Cognos, um, but on the horizon, if you're a TM1 or planning analytics customer, we will be adding uh, uh, we will be adding um, that audit information into Thrive. So be able to see your your TM1 and your Cognos usage information in one place. Um, and then after that, you know, we are in a longer term horizon considering other products. So um, you know, if you support Cognos and TM1 and Tableau and Click. Uh, eventually, Thrive will be able to correlate or uh, pull data from all of those products into one place so you can get a holistic view of the usage of your uh, analytics, uh, the, uh, the usage of analytics solutions within your organization. Uh, so that, that is the long-term uh, direction of, of what data will be able available in Thrive. But today, it's just the audit database. Excellent. All right, uh, there's one last question that I'll answer and then we'll wrap up. It is, could you please share the presentation with us? Um, we will be sending out a, a link uh, to this recorded webinar as a follow-up to everyone who had registered along with uh, the questions and answer, uh, answers from this discussion. So uh, that'll all be sent out uh, probably in the next few days as we consolidate everything. And uh, thank you all again for attending today. We really appreciate uh, you guys coming to, to see the webinar. Uh, thank you, Ryan and Greta. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.